Hello scholars, welcome. Mr. Hinkle here, talking about deserts, dry aspects of our landscape. But they are not just aspects of our landscape, they create specific landforms, which came first, the form or the process. The earth is a complex suite of landforms that are created by earth surface processes. And so let's talk about both the processes and the landforms in deserts. So we'll talk about desert processes, landforms that they produce. So desert processes shape landscapes and ecosystems. The ecosystems are sparse, but they are still there. I know we don't talk about biology very much in this class, but these processes are dominated by the fact that there's not very much precipitation. The temperatures are extremely variable. There's not much vegetation and they can have very high winds. Wind being a very active agent of erosion in these desert landscapes. So erosion carves valleys through flash flooding, large magnitude floods that happen infrequently. It doesn't never, oh, there's too many negatives. It rains in deserts very infrequently. And when it does, that rain comes down super fast and it fills up these canyons, eroding channels, carving canyons, depositing sediment, creating different landforms that we see. Weathering in the desert happens through temperature fluctuations. Thermal expansion is a physical weathering process where the rocks actually heat up and expand in the day and they cool off and they shrink at night. And that repetitive nature can cause the rocks to break down. The sunlight also causes chemical reactions that can break down the rocks. One chemical reaction we see here is desert varnish. Let's see, processes and landforms. which is a coating on the exterior rocks that forms due to mineralization. It's also known as desert patina or rock rust. And if you're really lucky, you can see petroglyphs carved by First Nations peoples in times that, uh, from the past kind of preserving ancient history of cultures existing on our earth. Awesome. Desert pavement is another erosional feature where the rocks that are in, eh, it goes like this, let's draw a picture. So you have a bunch of rocks deposited in sand and then the wind blows and it plucks up all the sand, making the rocks closer together forming what is known as desert pavement. It's kind of like concrete on the ground, but formed by natural processes. I love natural processes and seeing these things on Earth. Go to Death Valley, you'll see pebble and cobble sized sediment that has formed a thin veneer, a pavement, closely packed, interlocking, angular, and rock, uh, rounded rock fragments. So, deserts weather, they erode, they transport. They transport through flash floods. They transport through wind. It's called Aeolian transport. A E O L I A N. A lot of vowels in that word. I love it. But Aeolian is a fancy word for wind transport that's happening in deserts. Special shout out sliding stones, AKA racetrack rocks. So you see a dry lake bed and a rock in it and a stone and a path leading up to it the heck is going on here? Use your scientific eye to tell us. Well, the leading theory here is that when it does rain, and in certain times it rains and then gets cold, it rains, it floods the, this lake bed, it freezes, elevating the rock, and then it's windy and the wind pushes the rock as it glides along the ice, carving behind it a pathway. And when all of that rain and ice disappear, what's left behind is the sliding stone. 
really cool, awesome. When I learned about these, nobody knew there was ideas, but now we have this leading theory of sliding stones, landforms. These are desert erosional landforms. Yardongs, when you have a piece of resistant rock and everything else uh, erodes away, the landform carved by the bedrock, left over is a yardong. Ventifacts are rocks on the surface that are sculpted and carved by the wind and the sand. It's kind of like nature's sandblaster carving at the rocks. Blowouts are depressions or hollows in the ground caused by wind erosion. You can see the sand is stabilized by some sparse vegetation, but then a blowout occurs right in the middle of it. If we go on the other side of things to deposition, right? And let's just do this. We have erosion and depositional features. The surface of the earth, earth surface processes, creating landforms. And there's lots of processes, but we could zoom out and say there are erosional processes and depositional processes. Here is Death Valley. Amazing. I want to go right now. Okay, lecture canceled. Let's go to Death Valley. Here is a canyon that's dry, but when it does rain, water pumps through this canyon, carrying lots of sediment. That sediment deposits in this cone-shaped feature called an alluvial fan. And the beauty of going to Death Valley, and here's uh, for scale. Here's a road that goes around this alluvial fan. And you can see this dry lake bed around it. This is a playa. We'll talk about that next. The beauty of Death Valley is when you drive around, there's a lot of rocks, so you can see the geology. That's awesome. But then you have these alluvial fan features. These might be one of my favorite features, geologic features or landforms of Earth's surface beautiful cones, and then on various parts of it, you have these cone-shaped features, alluvial fans, all coalescing together to form one big, large mountain front. It's called a bajada. These usually uh, border the playa, which is when it rains, these are valleys, so the valleys flood with water, but because deserts are so dry, they're Defined by aridity, that water disappears, leaving behind low-lying areas where water collects during periods of precipitation, but they're typically flat and dry lake beds or basins. The Black Rock Desert being very famous, maybe the most famous playa of them all. This is the location that becomes Nevada's third biggest city every single year for the Burning Man Festival. But, and people who go to Burning Man, they discuss, they call it the playa, and there are specific features of the playa. But from a geological perspective, this is a dry lake bed. That, when it does rain, this is where all the water accumulates. We can't talk about deserts without talking about sand. Sand is a grain size. It's a technical definition of sediment, eroded particles of a specific grain size. In these areas, the sand is predominantly of the mineral quartz, and the sand <sighs> travels across the landscape, transported by wind to form sand dunes, wind-blown sand deposits. We have some great examples here at home and then all over the world. Great Sand Dunes National Park. Little Sahara Recreation Area, White Sands National Monument, Death Valley, there it is again, let's go. I thought we canceled class already. Uh, here we have Great Sand Dunes National Park with these beautiful sediment features, sand sediment features covering the landscape. So let's talk about some various types of sand dunes. Crescent-shaped sand dunes are called barkan. They're dunes with horns pointing downwind. Transverse sand dunes are long ridges of sand perpendicular to the wind direction. So ridges, wind. Linear dunes form parallel to the wind direction. So ridges, 
wind. The type of sand dunes that are going to be created are a function of the wind direction. Different wind directions and types of wind are going to create different types of sand dunes. Parabolic, up here, U-shaped dunes, usually stabilized by vegetation and very common along coastlines. And then when you have a region that has variable wind conditions, you get lots of ridges that will coalesce into certain points. These are called star dunes. And if you look at it, you can tell why it looks like a star. So these are our main types of dunes that are present in desert environments with low vegetation and high sediment load. The processes that are acting in deserts are the same processes that are acting all over the world on Earth's surface. Weathering, erosion, transportation, and deposition. The erosional and depositional features are unique within these desert environments, creating yardongs and ventifacts, alluvial fans, sand dunes. Hot deserts have lots of sands forming different types of sand dunes controlled by the type, proportion of wind, and if there is an availability of vegetation present. Deserts are awesome. You haven't spent time in the desert, please book a vacation, take a weekend trip, sit in the middle of the desert, maybe next to a Joshua tree, out in the middle of a field somewhere, listen to the wind blow, watch the sand moon, it's a deeply connecting and spiritual experience, and I highly encourage your next trip to be visiting the desert. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.